Hey, welcome back to How to Barbecue Right. I'm Malcolm Reed. Today it's all about the whole hog. I've got this awesome 150 pound Compart Duroc hog. Mr. Jim sent me down here to cook for New Year's. The folks at Old Hickory wanted me to have a good pit to cook it on. So we're showcasing their new double wide CTO with this Lazy Susie carousel that's gonna make it real easy to cook this hog. When you're doing hog, it's all about your equipment, knowing what you're doing, and you gotta have some help. So I've got a bunch of my barbecue buddies here with me. Got my brother Waylon, the other half of Killer Hogs. Got Mark and Jamie Williams from Swine Life. Got Heath, Heath Riles from Victory Lane here to help me. And we got my buddy Jay Durbin from Tennessee Mojo. Got a whole crew of people. We're gonna cook this hog about 18 hours. We gotta get it prepped up. We gotta get the smoker fired up. We gotta get it on, and we got a long night of cooking ahead of us, but we're gonna show you how to do it step by step. Anybody that's ever thought of cooking a whole hog needs to know how to do this. We're gonna show you how to do it right here at How to Barbecue Right. So the first thing we're gonna to do to this hog today is we're gonna get it on a table and get it spread out. The, the style of hog we're cooking is a belly up hog. We cook it this way because the skin acts as a bowl, gives us more surface area to create more bark, makes a juicier, tender product. So we gotta get the backbone split to where it'll open up. We use two tools to do this. We're using a Dremel with just a straight blade to give us a guide right down the backbone. The next, we're gonna come in with the Black & Decker hand saw. Before we make any cuts with the saw, we use a sharp knife to go all the way down the spine to give us some kind of a guideline. Then we come back with the Dremel tool with a straight blade on it to make that initial cut through the bone. This makes it easier to get just an accurate and an even cut. Now we come back with the hand saw in the guideline that we've created with the Dremel to cut through the bone without damaging it below. You wanna be real careful here because you can puncture that skin. So take your time and make a slow, accurate cut with the saw. You could always use that old fashioned uh, hatchet and mallet if you wanted to, but we found these two tools really make it easy. Now that we have the hog split open, the next step is gonna to be to remove some of the skirt meat and the first three or four ribs. What this is gonna do, it's gonna free up that belly meat, and then it's also gonna give us access to the shoulders, which allows us to build bark on all these areas. Just use a sharp knife, go underneath the skirt meat carefully, and then underneath the ribs. Then we're gonna come back with that Dremel tool and free those bones up from the backbone. Um, you can easily take this off with the knife and it's just gonna come off in one piece. And you can right away see that we've exposed all this surface area. It's gonna give us room to make some bark. Now we want the ribs to lay flat in the hog because as it cooks, they'll have a tendency to curl up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our knife and make us a couple score lines. One right in between the spare ribs and the loin ribs and one right at the rib tips. Then we're gonna come back with our hand saw, cut through these bones very carefully following those guidelines. This is gonna allow those spare ribs to lay flat. It's gonna leave our loin ribs still attached to the backbone, but it gives us access to those loins. So this is where we're at with this hog. We've got the first few ribs, the shoulders exposed. We've got the spare ribs laid out. We've got the loin ribs still attached to the backbone. We've exposed our loins. Now we're ready to clean up some of the sinew, some of this uh, glands. You'll see a gland in here. We wanna get that out. We're gonna uh, clean out the neck area, and the shoulder area. We're just gonna create a really good surface area to apply our seasonings, our dry rubs, and for our injections. So we're just gonna take our knives and start taking away anything that doesn't look good on the hog, anything you don't wanna eat. We've got that connective tissue, that silver skin sinew needs to come off. If you run across any glands, get those out of there because they don't taste good. Just take your time, go slow, work on the shoulders, work on the hams and carefully trim it down. Just remember, we're making that base on the meat where we can put seasoning on it. This is gonna make bark and this is what's gonna give it really good appearance when it's all cooked. Now with the hams, you wanna come back and take off a little bit of the excess skin. Just a couple inches is what we're doing. We're gonna make a guideline around it and come back and trim that hide off. What that's gonna do is gonna create more surface area on those hams. Give us a little more room to make some bark and that's what gives us the exposure to that meat. It's exactly what we wanna do. So we've got the shoulders exposed here. You can see I've took off all the sinew over the top of it. We want to really get it down to where we're down to meat 
we can create bark on it. He's worked on this side. Uh, he's done the same thing. We've got it even all the way across. It's gonna cook real even. We've even cleaned the neck up some. There's some glands up in the neck that you need to take out. You wanna take out some of that excessive fat. You wanna leave those jowls in there because that's some really good meat in that head. And Waylon and Mark are back here working on the hams. You can see how Mark's done this one. He's kind of cut out a little bit of the skin to expose a little more surface area. Now you can really make some good bark. Uh, we can put our seasonings or dry rubs on top of that ham and Waylon's doing the same thing over here on this side. We're just opening it up, uh, cleaning it off, getting rid of the sinew and some of the fat and it's gonna give us a good layer to build our flavors. Now the last step in the trimming process is to remove the legs off the hog. We take the legs off because it helps the hog fit better onto the cooker on the rack we're using. Also, the, those legs will tend to curl up on you when you cook them and it makes for bad presentation. What you want to do is just take a knife and score around each hog leg right above the knee and then come back with a handsaw and go right through that bone. Now that the trimming's done, uh, we want to take the hog outside and kind of rinse it off with the water hose. Just move your table outside use some cool water and spray it all over the hog. This is gonna get rid of any of those bone fragments, anything we missed during the trimming process. We're gonna wash it all out. So we're injecting the hog now, and um, what he's doing, he's shooting it up with a mixture of, of his pork injection, it's Victory Lane pork injection, mixed with apple juice. It's got the directions on the package, and then some dynamite pork injection. Heath, tell us uh, what you're trying to do to the ham, how much you're trying to get in it. I try to inject personally more of the ham than I do all the rest of the hog because the ham has less fat, you know, and so you want to be sure that it retains more moisture than pretty much you want to try to even it out. Uh, and so I always want to blow them up really good first before I go bone to the rest of the hog. You can see he's spreading these injection sites out about an inch apart all over the whole hog. You want to key in on those areas like the ham, the loin, the belly, underneath those ribs, and then last but not least, the shoulders. They have a lot of mass there, so we want to get some good injection in it. But we want the hog to be evenly distributed with injection so it has flavor all the way through it. We're cooking this 150 pound hog. We're going to need about two gallons of injection. That's about a gallon for each side. So we're getting ready to move our hog over to our hog rack. Now this is a special custom rack that Old Hickory's made. It's called the Lazy Suey. It fits on a little spindle on the rack and it allows you to be able to spin it as you cook it so you can get even cooking. It's great for picking a whole hog up. Two men can get on the sides of this, slide it right up on the rack in the cooker. We'll show you that when we get it all seasoned up. But what we're doing first is we're gonna put our hog Lazy Suey over here on a table. We're gonna cover it with some aluminum foil. So we're gonna wrap this hog after a while. You wanna do the aluminum foil first because it's easier when that hog's cooked halfway, you don't have to move it around, flip it over to get it wrapped up. We're, we're pre-staging our aluminum foil. We're gonna get it laid out on the rack here and we'll get the hog moved over. Then we're gonna show you how we put our seasoning on it. You wanna tear off long strips of aluminum foil, usually four or five feet long, and then we roll the ends up. This, this makes it easier to access them later in the cook. For this hog, we ran three sections lengthwise of the hog um, all the way down the rack, kind of overlapping those sections so nothing leaks out. And then we came back with four sections going across the hog. It's gonna give us a good area to wrap up the foil around the hog later on. Uh, you also wanna stage up some foil underneath the shoulders and the hams. It's gonna let you individually wrap those as well. Now we just move the hog right on top of the foil get it centered on the rack, and it's ready to season. I'm gonna give it a good dose of that salt, pepper, and garlic first, just a base layer, get some good flavors going. I'm using that AP seasoning. You've all seen me use it before. We're just gonna get it all over the hams, down the belly and the ribs. So now we're just giving it a light coat of mustard. We're gonna rub all this in. This is gonna hold our dry rub, help us create that bark on it. You don't have to get real heavy with it. You just want a light, thin coat all over everything. I'm just using plain yellow mustard. All right, for our third layer, we're gonna start with our dry rub seasons, and I like to give it a spicy layer next. Bring some heat to it. So I'm using my hot barbecue rub, and I'm not going real heavy. Notice it's not heavy with any of it that we're using. You can always go back and add a little. But we're gonna layer these flavors on this hog. 
start building our bark. As Waylon's finishing that side up, we're gonna put our next sweet layer. This is gonna tie everything together. I'm using my regular barbecue rub here. And if, you know, if you're doing a hog at home or, or anything, you, know, you can use your own flavors. If there's something you like in your region that's, that you know you really like on barbecue, go ahead and use that. So we've taken the head of the hog and we've just turned it up after we got it all seasoned underneath it. And we like to you know, put an apple in its mouth when it gets done just for presentation. So what we did was we just kind of pried apart and put a chunk of wood down in there to keep it open as it cooks. Before we spray the skin, we wanna make sure we have our loins covered up good because the loins cook faster than anything else on the hog and they don't need to go as far because they'll dry out. So we're gonna insulate them a little bit. And what Wayland has here, he's gonna come in and we're gonna stuff some compart pepper and salt sausage down in this cavity. Then we're gonna to top it with some good thick sliced compart bacon. As that sausage renders down those spices and seasons, that fat in the sausage, it's gonna get down on top of those loins. It's gonna flavor them. It's also gonna protect them while they're cooking to keep them from drying out. So now we're taking compart bacon. You can use any bacon, but why not use the best? We're cooking a compart hog. We're keeping those flavors together. We're just gonna kind of make a lattice all the way down over the sausage, over the loin ribs, on top of those loins. It's gonna add some more flavor, another layer of insulation, and it looks really good when it gets cooked. Okay, we got the bacon latticed on. We topped it with just a little bit of the barbecue rub just to give it a little color. Now we're gonna come in with just plain vegetable spray and get the outside skin greased up a little because we want it to get a golden color. We wanna protect that skin. We don't want it to be black. You know, we're, we wanna cook a real pretty hog. Vegetable cooking spray is going to help protect that skin, help it turn gold. It's gonna do the same thing for the head too. All right, we're ready to put this hog on the double wide CTO. You can see we've got a little more full around it. This is to protect that skin. We've got it sprayed down with cooking spray. We're also gonna shield it because we're gonna keep that color nice and light until the very end when we wanna get the color on it, it's gonna be mahogany. That's why we do that. We protected the head, we put a little extra full around the snout and then covered the whole head up, wrapped each ear individually. It's gonna really make the head look nice. We laid a little shield over the bacon that's covering the loins. That's gonna keep them a little bit of extra heat deflected off it. We're ready to pick this whole lazy suey hog rack up. We're gonna take it up to the double wide CTO. We've got it coming up to temp. You wanna start it out on a cool smoker, let it slowly come up. We're gonna be cooking at about 225 degrees because it's gonna be a long cook. You know, we're talking 15, 16, hey, maybe in 18 hours. We don't really uh, worry about the time. What we're gonna be worried about is internal temperature. When we wrap this hog after about six hours, we're gonna put a probe in the ham, probe in the deepest part of the shoulder. We're gonna put it to bed. We're gonna watch it all night. So we got the hog loaded up on the cooker. The Lazy Suey is basically a rack sitting on top of a little track and it allows it to spin by a spindle. And this is brand new from Old Hickory. They just came out with it. We're gonna get the door shut on the CTO. We're gonna start with a little bit of hickory wood, a little bit of pecan, and just a touch of cherry. I like to get three flavors of wood on hogs because it really blends really well. Keep that cooking temperature about 225. It's all it's gonna take. We want it to go low and slow. So we've had the hog on um, an hour and a half and this is when we start our baste routine. In the baste, I'm using my hog base. It's a couple bottles of zesty Italian dressing and then I mix a couple bottles of hot water with that. Dry rub, a little bit of soy, a little bit of Worcestershire, whisk it all up and that makes a really good baste for hog. You wanna do this about every hour and a half um, no matter what cooker you're cooking on. You wanna keep that meat nice and moist. We've got the skin covered up and protected, but we're getting the, the baste on the bark, on the meat, and it's gonna add more flavor, and it's also gonna keep it moist, keep it from getting too dry. We'll do this every hour and a half, all night until we get the right color, and we're gonna wrap it. We'll show you the wrapping technique next. It'll be about uh, six hours in, it'll be time to wrap. All right, we've been rolling this hog right along. Been about six hours. We've been basting it every hour and a half, like we said earlier. And you can see we're getting a little bit of accumulation of moisture in there, that's okay. That's why we wanna cook it belly up like this. So it holds that moisture in. Uh, now it's time to where we've got all the color we want on it. We're gonna go ahead, close the wrap up around it. That's the next phase. We're gonna pull the lazy suey out just a little bit on the rack here. 
where we can spin it around. This is the point where we want to spin the hog. We're also going to bring the foil up that we pre-staged and just unwrap it, bring it up around the shoulders, up around the hands, and over and across the hog. That's going to get it completely wrapped and it's going to be put to bed. It's going to be nice and tight in there and we're going to hold some of that moisture in. We're going to trap some heat in it and that's what's going to get us to tenderize this hog, render that fat down. It's going to make it delicious. So before we close up the second half of the aluminum foil, we want to get our probes in so we can monitor these internal temperatures. Mark's going to stick one in the ham and a thick part of the ham and I'm going in the shoulder with this one. And I stuck it down in there pretty good, just in a thick part away from the bone. And we're going to be using this new smoke wireless alarm system by Thermalworks to monitor that internal temperature in the shoulders. I got it set at 190, 185 in the hams. That's our target temps for taking this hog to. We're gonna watch these all night. Great thing about the smoke is I can see it when I'm inside. Lay down to take a nap, I can wake up, see my alarm. If it goes off, I know I need to get out here and check on something. We'll load those charcoal up. Doesn't need any more smoke tonight. All it's gonna take is just some steady heat, 225 degrees. We're gonna let it roll all night. So we got the hog wrapped up nice and tight. We're gonna trap all that heat and that steam in there. It's gonna really break it down. We've rotated around. We got our shoulder probe in, our ham probe in. All we gotta do is put it to bed, let it cook all night, make sure we got coals in here. We'll check them every few hours to make sure we got time to get us a quick nap. Stick around, we'll show you how we finish this hog up tomorrow morning. Well, good morning, folks. We've been cooking the hog all night. We're finally hitting those internal temperatures we wanted to see in the hams and in the shoulders. Uh, we kept the fire steady all night. We added coals as needed. But the most important thing is we kept that door closed, let the smoker do its job. Now it's the moment of truth. This is when I really start getting excited. We're gonna start unwrapping this hog. Uh, you just wanna take your time, unwrap it slowly. You can see we've got some real good color on it right away. I mean, it, uh, the skin turned out perfect on this one. It's got that brownish hue to it. We didn't burn the bacon. It's kind of got a, a nice mahogany color on top of it. It looks great. We're going to make it look even better. You can see it's got a lot of moisture still in the cavity. We want to get that dipped out. And we just use a regular old plastic cup to kind of dip out as much excess moisture as we can. And we're folding that full what's left down and around the hog. Now we're gonna come back and we're gonna hit it with some more dry rub on top of that wet bark. When that hog comes out of that wrap, everything's moist. We wanna really set the bark on it. So we just add a little more light layer of rub over the top of all the meat. You wanna let that set for about five or 10 minutes with the doors closed. Remember our cooker's still running at 225, so we're just gonna set this rub just for 10 minutes. Once that rub's set for about 10 minutes, we're gonna come back with the glaze on top of it. What we're using is warm barbecue sauce thin with just a little bit of apple juice. You can use any kind of sauce that you like here. Of course, I'm using my killer hog sauce. It's really gonna give it that shine and make that hog look real pretty. We're just using a barbecue mop and basting the sauce on all the areas where we have bark. For a little extra presentation, we always like to put an apple in the hog's mouth. Just take that block of wood out and stick an apple right in. The glaze needs to set for about 20 or 30 minutes, so just shut the doors on the cooker, hold that temp steady at 225. Now we've got one fine looking hog here. I'm telling you that glaze really makes it pop. It's shining, it's got some beautiful bark in it. You just want to dive right in there and start tearing it apart. What we like to do is garnish the outside of that hog because people always want to take pictures when you're doing one this way. So what we're using is just bunches of kale that we spread out along the edges. This is great for hiding any leftover aluminum foil that's underneath it or any imperfections in the skin. Uh, you can use any kind of garnish you want to make it pop. We're using a couple pineapples today, but when you get into presentation, the sky's the limit. Hey, I'm telling you, this hog turned out great today. We got it glazed from head to toe. The bark's perfect on it, and I guarantee you that meat is moist and juicy as it can be. It's gonna fall right off the bone. It's just ready to be picked. All right, after 18 hours, we've got our hog glazed up. It is looking great. Everybody's here. We're getting ready to break it down and serve it. Um, I'll tell you what, I can't thank the folks at Old Hickory and Compart uh, more than, than words can say. I mean, this hog is gonna be awesome. They've got a great product. 
This double wide CTO has done its job. I'm telling you this lazy suey rack that they, the folks at uh, Old Hickory have came up with works fantastic for showing a hog. You can see we've got it garnished up. It looks great. We can spin it easy to get to the backside. What more can you ask for in a hog carousel? Hey, thanks for checking out our video today. Hope you guys try to cook a whole hog. I guarantee you it's going to turn out great. Next time you have a big party, get you some help, get a hog on the smoker. How to barbecue right style.